Celtic Badass of the Week showcases a person of Celtic heritage each week. Those who exemplify the give no shit attitude and come out on top. They may come from our past or our present, but rest assured they come from all walks of life and legend. They are men, women, even old ladies and pirate queens. Now you don't have to be a muscled up kilt in a fur kilt swinging a mighty sword. You can just be a 4 foot 11 Welsh woman and suffragette who knows jujitsu. Now most of these badasses are all too real. And while some of these are only legend, they're badass legends. The only prerequisite is Celtic blood and badasses. Calgacus, Scotland's first Braveheart. Calgacus lived from very roughly AD 50 to AD 100. He was the leader of the Caledonians who fought against the Romans at the Battle of Mons Grappius in AD 84. Calgacus appears as an important character in the biography of the Roman governor of Britain, Julius Agricola, De Vida et Morbius Julia Agricola, written by his son-in-law, Tacitus the famous historian, in AD 98. Now, nothing else is known about him from any other source, and there has to be some question about whether he actually existed at all. If he didn't, then someone like him probably did. His name means the swordsman, and he was a real pain in the Romans' ass. The Roman conquest of Britain was a process that began with Julius Caesar's invasion in 56 BC then was completed in AD 43 under Empress Claudius. However, it wasn't easy. A decisive battle ending the Boudican Rebellion took place in Roman Britain in AD 60 or 61 right around there and pitted an alliance of British Celtic peoples led by Boudica against a Roman army led by Gaius Suetonius Polonius. Although heavily outnumbered, the Romans decisively defeated the allied tribes, inflicting heavy losses on them and crushing the indigenous peoples of Britain, leading to the invasion of southern Britain being largely completed by 80 AD. It is believed that the Stain Gate, a road built from one side of Britain to the other, was probably built under the governorship of Agricola from 77 to 85 AD during the reigns of the emperors Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. It was built as a strategic road when the northern frontier was on the line of the Forth and Clyde, before the Hadrian or the Antonine walls were even built. The Stained Gate was an important Roman road built in what is now northern England. It linked two forts that guarded important river crossings, Corstapitum on the River Tyne in the east and situated on Deer Street and Lugavallium on the River Eden in the west. It was important for the Romans to have this boundary before they moved on to the north of Britain. And that happened with the Battle of Mons Grappius. According to Tacitus, the Battle of Mons Grappius was a military, a Roman military victory in what is now Scotland taking place in AD 83 or AD 84. Now Julius Agricola began his campaign to conquer the land we now call Scotland in AD 80. By the beginning of 84, they controlled everything up to the Tayside, and in that year, pressed still further into northern Britain, trying to draw the main forces of the Caledonian leader, Calgacus, into open battle. Caledonians, however, were intent on maintaining their hit-and-run tactics, but when Agricola's troops captured many of the storehouses holding the Caledonians' recently gathered harvest, Calgacus had to choose between fighting or letting his people starve in the upcoming winter. The final showdown occurred at the Battle of Mons Grappius. The location of the battle is subject of wide debate today, with candidates including uh, Benneke in Aberdeenshire and Gaskaridge, west of Perth, and as far afield as Moray, Fife, and Sutherland have been suggested. Now, while Tacitus was a little vague about geography, he was definite about the battle itself. 
According to him, the Caledonians mustered some 30,000 men to face the 20,000 Roman legionaries and auxiliaries under Agricola. The battle started with an exchange of missiles before the 8,000 Roman auxiliaries in the Roman front line attacked uphill, closing with the Caledonians to neutralize the latter's longswords. The 3,000 Roman cavalry then outflanked the Caledonians, causing them to break and flee. The main body of the Roman army at Mont Grappius, the 9,000 men of the legions, were held in reserve and took no active part in the battle. By Tacitus' account, the battle cost the lives of 10,000 Caledonians and just 360 Romans. The remaining 20,000 Caledonians simply melted away into the hills. No mention is made of the death or capture of Calgacus, and he was among he was among those who survived. He became this lurking presence in the mountains and forests of northern Britain so he could wage a guerrilla-style warfare in order to ensure the Romans would never conquer the north. To modern eyes, one aspect of Tacitus' coverage of the Battle of Mons Grappius stands out as especially odd. According to Tacitus, Galgacus gave a long yet inspired speech to his army before the battle, which he ended like this. There are no tribes beyond us, nothing indeed but waves and rocks, and the yet more terrible Romans, from those oppression escaped, is vainly sought by obedience and submission. Robbers of the world, having by their universal plunder exhausted the land they rifled the deep, if the enemy be rich, they are rapacious. If he be poor, they must, they lust for dominion. Neither the east nor the west has been able to satisfy them. Alone among men, they covet with equal eagerness poverty and riches. To robbery, slaughter, plunder, they give the lying name of empire. They make solitude and call it peace. Setting aside the likelihood of the Roman governor's son-in-law being allowed within earshot of Calgacus' uh, pre-match pep talk, there are very odd anti-Roman sentiments to appear in Tacitus's biography of Agricola. Setting even that aside, the reported speech seems to owe much more to heroic fiction than to accurate reportage. Indeed, some of this begins to sound remarkably like the pre-battle speech put into the mouth of the character of William Wallace by the scriptwriter Randall Wallace for the film Braveheart. But history is what people agree to believe. So perhaps we should just be grateful that Scotland has had two such remarkable orators at different points in its history. Domitian's Dacian War was a conflict between the Roman Empire and the Dacian Kingdom, located in modern Romania. The Romans had invaded the province of Moesia. The war occurred during the reign of the Roman Emperor Domitian in the years 86 to 88 AD. However, the buildup for this war took much needed supplies and men away from the Roman frontier in northern Britain. This reduction in forces in Britain caused a pullback by the Roman armies and allowed the Caledonians and Calgacus to take back what they had lost and through a campaign of hit-and-run guerrilla tactics, the Caledonians held off the Roman advance into northern Britain until Rome's eventual withdrawal from Britain around 410 AD. The Romans tried to gain some ground with the Antonine and Hadrian's Wall in the years before, but neither attempts gained them the victories they could have had if Rome's ambitions hadn't spread their forces and supplies so thin.